Just over one year ago, I decided to download Unreal Engine and deep dive straight into game development. With no previous knowledge of coding or visual scripting, I set out to make a racing game. Which turned out to be a very challenging and quite honestly a dumb first game to start with. Since I wanted the car to be fully physics simulated, which meant many of my nights looked like this. And one of the main things I've learned from this journey is that game development is far from a linear path from start to finish. One day you will find yourself making really good progress, everything just goes smooth, and the next couple of days you're stuck wondering why the whole game crashes when you're trying to swap one bumper of a car. But comparing to where I started in January of last year to where I am today, I'd say that the game has gotten a pretty big upgrade. So it's definitely been a roller coaster of a journey this past year, so today I wanted to talk through the process, what I've learned, what I struggled with, and where I'm at today with the development of my racing game, Apex Rush. Which you can now wishlist on Steam, link is in the description. Thank you for supporting the game. So at the start of 2023, I found myself kind of stuck with the content I was making. I kind of found myself in a loop, I guess, and I knew that I had to try something new. So I took kind of a risk at the time, sort of cutting back on the amount of videos that I was making. And instead, I started spending more time learning something new, which ended up being Unreal Engine. And I knew that I specifically wanted to make a racing game. And let's just say that the first time opening Unreal was huh? confusing. I had no idea what anything did, so I looked up how to make a game on YouTube, and I went through a couple of beginner-friendly videos on how to make a small test level. I also opted to learn visual scripting instead of coding in C++. This basically means that you visually see nodes in a graph that tells you what's happening in the code, which just seemed far less intimidating and scary than having to learn C++. Now, I have always been a pretty fast learner, especially when I'm doing something that I really enjoy. So after a week, I had put together this little racing level with some jumps and a very, very janky looking car that I had modeled in Blender. In this week, I was soaking in all the knowledge I could find about making a racing game. I was buying courses, watching a ton of tutorials, and learning new things every single day. Now, this first level I had made purely by just watching tutorials and, I guess, copying the code to learn what I'm doing. And once I released the game, I got a ton of feedback and, of course, a bunch of ideas that I totally knew how to add to the game. But after releasing this first video, I did try, of course, to improve the game every single time I released a devlog. And I think releasing devlogs throughout this whole process definitely helped improving the game, since I wanted to have things to show in the videos, which meant that I had to do something, otherwise there wouldn't be any videos. But continuing forwards, the idea was to eventually build out this first level, testing a bunch of different jumps, track building techniques, and then release a small play test for people to try. So after working day and night to get this together, I finally had a playable level with a start, finish, working timer system, with checkpoints and a decent handling car. Well, looking back at it now, it's actually very bad. It had very, the controls were very delayed. It had this weird landing bug happening all the time. But it was a work in progress. So it got released on itch and nearly 100,000 people downloaded it, which was way more than I had expected at the time. So after releasing this, I have been working on the game day and night for the past months. It was finally time to take a little break. So I actually took two weeks off not doing anything. When summer comes around, I spend more time offline. I like to go fishing and being outdoors as the winter time here in Sweden isn't always that fun. This is also one thing that I learned throughout the year, is that game development is very time consuming, especially as a solo developer, which I'll get into a bit more soon, which is why it's very important to set up a plan with a list of things to do that you can keep coming back to, because sometimes you can just find yourself working on the game and you just tweak something here, tweak something there, but you're not really progressing the game forwards, if that makes sense. But after this first playtest got released, I put together a sort of bigger plan of the next steps to take for the development. And I split them into these components right here. Car physics and controls, performance and optimization, level and game design, 3D modeling, sound design, and the track builder. So using the feedback from the second playtest, which I released shortly after the first one with some improved handling and optimization, I began listing things that I wanted to add or change. This is also where I added some quality of life updates, such as in-air controls for the cars, and also the camera rotation not being locked to the car, so you can actually see where you're landing. I also began looking at expanding the team at this time to work on some of the other core components. After working on the game myself for about six months, apart from having the race car model designed by 7HC, I realized that many of the features that I had written down, I 
first had no idea how to even add or how to learn how to add them. So that's when I decided to expand the team and begin working more closely with other talented developers while I could focus on my top priorities being the physics and the game and level design. So to shortly summarize the plan that I have for the game, it's going to be a physics based arcade racing game with different worlds, tracks, cars with unique handling and customization a track builder mode, the ability to play with both a keyboard controller and I'm also trying to implement a steering wheel support as well. The different game modes are going to be racing, drifting and stunting. The racing will mostly be done on tracks that I'll be building or that you download from the Steam Workshop. It's not going to feature a multiplayer mode at launch but it is something that I'm looking into for the future. You will still be able to battle each other by setting the best track times on the global leaderboards. The drifting will be done in different worlds and maps that feature different challenges to complete, a scoring system with multipliers, hit targets targets and you will also be able to of course free roam on all the levels. And stunting will I guess be part of the overall game as well since it does have in-air controls allowing you to flip and roll the car uh, to land different stunts and complete certain tracks. And as you complete different levels and challenges, you level up the car to unlock new parts, liveries, paint jobs and stuff like that. The next step in the development was setting up the Steam page. This meant of course that I had to get the game to a ready enough state to be able to show different game states on the Steam page. And the team had now also expanded to four people, so it's me, then we have 7HC who is the 3D modeler for the cars and the track pieces and he's doing an amazing job with these models creating different body kits and parts that you can unlock throughout the game. And then we got Simon who is currently working on the track builder mode. This will be one of the core aspects of the game as it allows the player to create their own maps with a set of pieces and objects which we are still expanding on and they can then share them to the Steam Workshop so that other people can play their tracks as well. And recently to work on the sound design, primarily the engine sounds, we had Kayo join the team, who's previously worked on games such as Rocket League and League of Legends, to now work on Apex Rush. And this has made a massive upgrade to the overall feel and experience of the game, adding a lot of dynamics to the sounds as well with the turbo, the tire rolling sound and different surfaces, the skidding sounds, the intakes, the rev limiter, everything just sounds way better better than the previous loop that I had. <laughs> I think I had that same engine sound for like seven months. Just that one cue just looping over and over again. Now, while I would have loved to fully solo develop this game, it just wouldn't make sense. The time scope, it would take me years to make what Simon and Caillou and 7HC has made so far. So I'd much rather expand the team, learn together and have people with the knowledge and motivation to work on those parts of the game, do so. And I realize that this isn't something everyone can do, obviously. It costs money to expand your team and pay everybody. But I'm fortunate to have had this amazing audience for the past 10 years uh, supporting me so that I can invest into this project. There's no publisher involved or anything, it's just me funding the project out of my own pocket creating the game that I want to make. So this is where I'm at right now, getting the game ready to be released on Steam sometime this year. This step will of course take the most time as I'm implementing everything with scoring systems, leaderboards, challenges, and of course making all the levels and tracks. But my main focus from the very start, as you all know, has been the physics. The car handling is set up using the built-in Chaos Vehicles plugin, um, at first, I thought drifting would be pretty much impossible to implement using this. But after studying not only the plugin, but how real life physics work when you're drifting, such as the slip angles, lateral forces, weight shifting, suspension, center of gravity. Boring! Yeah, it's a very long list. If you're trying to make a racing game, I would actually recommend trying to read about how it actually works in real life and then try and implement that in the game. It actually helps out a lot. But I like to think that the drifting is actually very, very solid right now and it's been improving every single week, I feel like. And this is what I meant at the start, that I would not recommend you try to make a physics-based game as your first one. But saying that, it has also taught me a lot of things, of course, along the journey. And the reason why I have spent so much time on it and just perfecting it is... Uh, like I said before, I think that no matter how good the game runs or feels or looks, if the handling feels off or it's just bad as you're playing, the whole user experience will be bad, making the whole game bad. Now, I still have a lot of work to do when it comes to the handling. For example, we just added a new card, the Nexo, which is inspired by the NSX. Uh, figuring out how to make it drive fast with grip, but also give it the ability to drift in corners at high speeds. Same goes with performance. Obviously, at the start, I didn't really focus too much about performance. I was just trying to make whatever I wanted to make. But lately, as more features do get added, uh, not just visually, but in the game code, I'm learning a lot on how to improve yeah, the speed and optimization of that as well. And of course, along with this, making sure that all of the other core components that I mentioned before are polished, running well, and potentially also releasing a small demo on Steam. I'll keep you posted on that, but 
I think it would be a pretty good idea to, yeah, get a small demo out first. The game is also going to get an official trailer released very soon, and I will also be updating the whole Steam page with uh, new screenshots and content. You know, the list of features to add is uh, still long, and I'm trying to implement as many as I can before release, but of course focusing on the ones with the highest priority, because I will still be adding features and content uh, after the initial release on Steam. And as for a release date, I would say sometime towards the summer, like June, July. For the price point, it's not gonna be free, it's gonna be around $15, which I think is a fair price for the yeah, time and money that I've invested into this project so far. And there also won't be any like additional costs in the future with like DLCs or in-game content. When you own the game, you own all the future content as well. And if you want to support the game and you're interested in playing it when it comes out, you can go to the Steam page, link is in the description, head over there, Drop it a wish list and a follow if you'd like. And yeah, as always, thank you guys so much for the support you've shown on Apex Rush. I can't wait until you guys get to play it. And yeah, be sure to subscribe to stay up to date. And I will catch you guys later. Take care.